Let's talk about open science and open data, open access, open educational resources, open everything. We have one expert with us and she's the best one to talk to about these questions. Uh, she is an advocate for pretty much open everything, open science basically. Uh, this is Erin. Erin is with the University of Mexico. It's called the National Autonomous University of Mexico. Yes. Yeah. And it's Erin McKinnon. Yes. So uh, thank you for taking your time. Sure, my pleasure. What's the connection between these different open movements? Should they connect uh, more than they did in the past? And what's the path to uh, holistic open science approach? Yeah, I think absolutely they're all connected. Uh, historically, we've kind of moved in different spaces. We've organized separate conferences mm -hmm. dealing with open access, open data, open source, open science, open education. Um, but I think really we're all working towards the same goals, which is something we have to keep in mind. So at the end of the day, what we want is better access to information. Uh, we want increased participation. That could be increased participation in uh, science or in development of code or in education. Uh, and we want better outcomes. We want better science, uh, more reproducible science, or we all also are interested in, in better uh, learning outcomes. So I think we have a lot in common. And the challenge now is to figure out how we put our heads together and move forward with, uh, with a common strategy. Why do you think they are so much in, in the silos right now and what can we do to change this? I think maybe it has to do with uh, the way that some of these different movements developed. Uh, so open source really developed in the academic community uh, and through scientists that were working and, and wanting to share code and develop code. Uh, open access probably developed a little bit more in the libraries and, and unfortunately we kind of have these divisions between some of the academic departments and the library. There's also not a lot of communication there and we'd love to improve that communication. So I think it has to do in part with how they developed and then also when you're organizing a conference now you have to sort of restrict uh, the number of topics that you have you can't jam everything into the program so I think it's been a sort of a natural way for people to say okay we're just going to focus on open access or open data or open education and they do have uh, distinct challenges there are definitely um, different areas that we have to focus on, different strategies we might implement. But um, I think focusing on those differences uh, rather than focusing on the commonalities is kind of uh, holding us back a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you could in, uh, reinvent the conference landscape on, on all uh, open topics, uh, how would uh, the ideal landscape look like? Oh gosh, that's a great question. I, I would love to see more common spaces where we could get advocates from all these different areas together. Uh, so the, the first big challenge is to get them in the same room yeah. and get them talking to each other and get them to recognize all these uh, common goals that we have uh, and then start talking strategy. So I think that I would love to, uh, to see more events where, where we're bringing people with diverse perspectives and we're bringing people from faculties, from libraries, from maybe NGOs uh, and all of those people coming together and then maybe a little bit uh, less of the kind of keynote panel style of, of talks and more of the unconference uh, that's becoming increasingly popular where we get people in a room and say okay your goal for today is this and we kind of uh, you know work together to, to uh, achieve something at the end of the event. I think it would be great to see more events like that. Yeah. Do you see some, some great examples where this is already happening or some small projects which combine different open approaches? Yeah, so I work with one group, it's called OpenCon. So this is a, a global conference. Uh, one of the interesting things about the conference is we have people apply and then we give a, a large percentage of those applicants, the ones that are accepted, uh, a full scholarship to attend. So we get really good global representation that way. But we also bring in people from open access, open data, open education, which are kind of the three focus areas, and then also have some people coming in from open government, open source. So we are getting people from these different advocacy areas in the same room. And uh, for that event, we try to do at least some hackathons or some unconference sessions where uh, instead of having that formal talk on a stage, uh, we get people discussing and, and seeing what it is they, they want to work on. We also have a session called uh, Story Circles, mm -hmm. where people get together and they share their personal experiences about how they got into advocacy and kind of what their goals are. And I think that's a really good way to connect people from different movements. So I think OpenCon is doing a really, a really good job in that, in that mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in Germany, OER is uh, somewhat a younger movement and some other movements like open source have been there mm -hmm. before long ago. Uh, do you think they, they can still learn from each other, yeah. although they are in different silos? 
Absolutely, and I think uh, especially that the open education community has a lot to learn from the open source community. Mm -hmm. So as you said, they've been doing this for a long time. Uh, they've established really nice ways to license material, to share material, to collaborate uh, platforms that allow you to do this and allow you to track the whole uh, history. So something I've been I've been hearing a lot of people say about open educational resources, well, how do we kind of track the development of OER, of a particular resource, and keep track of all those changes? Well, the open source community has been doing that with code for a long time, and they have really good ways of doing that. So I think the OER community can learn a lot from the open source community. Uh, on the flip side, I think the OER community has thought a lot about how you present material in an easily understandable way, uh, both for students and for educators, and the open source community could learn from that. So it's not just sharing the code, but it's also explaining what your code does and creating an educational resource that goes along with that. So I think we have a lot to learn uh, from the different communities. Okay, thank you. I, I'd like to do a bonus track, uh, like like a, a verbal link. Uh, you do a website, or you yeah. set up a website, and people can get uh, cartoons, basically, and yes. information and arguments. Uh, yeah. What is it? So the website's called Why Open Research. It's whyopenresearch.org. And uh, yeah, the idea of the site was to educate other researchers that might want to start, uh, or even educators, right, that might want to start sharing their work, but really don't have a good idea of what the benefits might be or how they might yeah. uh, do this. And we wanted to put things in a very simple, accessible yeah. format. And one of the ways we thought was uh, cartoons, that these grab people's attention and they get people excited or they get people laughing. And that gets people interested in the information that comes behind the cartoons. So uh, my father's an illustrator, uh, his name is John McKiernan. So we we developed these, the set of cartoons that on the website explain simple things about how you might uh, share your work, uh, how you might increase your visibility, uh, and so associated with each of those cartoons we have some simple how-to guides and things like that. So. Are the cartoons openly licensed too? Yes, everything on the website is openly licensed, so yeah. it's under a Creative Commons CC yeah. by license, so all the cartoons, all the content, so people can download those cartoons, reuse and, them. And maybe do translations in German. Yes, that yeah. would be fantastic. So something we are reaching out to the community and trying yeah. to crowdsource a little bit is yeah. we would love to do these uh, in multiple languages, yeah. uh, the cartoons and the content that we have on the website. Uh, and we're really interested in, in collaborating with people and, and figuring out how we could do that. Yeah. Okay, so maybe someone's seen the video uh, now says, I want to take a look at it. That's step number one. And if you want to reuse or remix it, it can be translated to German. Uh, yeah. But it's really helpful just to find it, post it on Twitter or something. Yes. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank uh, you. You're doing an amazing job. Thank uh, you so please much. Please continue and maybe we'll talk to each other in a while from now. On that would be great. Oh, yeah, info anywhere else. Thank All right. You. Thanks. <laughs>